Welcome to this month's edition of the ACFE Podcast. I'm John Gill, Vice President of Education. We have Dr. Joseph T. Wells, who is Chairman and Founder of the ACFE. We have James D. Radley, who is President and CEO and also Co-Founder of the ACFE. And we have Jeanette Levy, Vice President of Administration. In honor of the 25th anniversary, of the founding of the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, we have asked these three who have been here the longest time to kind of give us some of their memories of the founding of the ACFE and where they see the future of the organization. So let's start at the beginning, way back there 25 years ago, and let's uh, ask Dr. Joseph T. Wells, what gave you the idea for the ACFE and how did it start? The idea came to me over a period of time and probably originated with a conversation I had with uh, a colleague, Dr. Steve Albrecht. And uh, he was asking me what a good uh, fraud investigator, what kind of uh, skills that fraud investigator had. And I said, well, you know, he was part accountant he was part investigator, he was part lawyer, and he was part criminologist. And I didn't realize at the time that that would end up being the common body of knowledge for the ACFE. And then had another conversation with uh, uh, Dr. Donald Cressy around the same time. And he was talking about how he believed that America needed a new kind of of corporate cop. Uh, he said, the situation we have right now is we have investigators investigating fraud who don't know anything about accounting, and we have accountants who are investigating fraud who don't know anything about investigation. And what we need to do is combine these two skills. And so over a period of months, uh, I'd kind of thought about this on and off. And then I realized that even though I had done fraud work for 20 plus years at the time, that there was not an organization devoted to the many, many people who do fraud work. And there wasn't an organization to uh, represent them. And so I came in one morning and sat out on the front porch of the Gregor Building with in, in, here in Austin with Jim Ratley, and we talked about it. When Joe told me about his vision for the certified fraud examiner, I knew right then it was a home run. What we had to do from that point on, we knew that there was definitely a need as well as a place in the business community for the certified fraud examiners, we had to create a vehicle to allow that to happen. And from that sprang, at that time, the National Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. And I think back to that day because I remember that conversation almost verbatim. We set forth some policies as we were talking about it that very day and here 25 years later those policies have not changed one bit. Um, the first one was that our members were going to be treated like professionals. Um, everything would be top drawer. We've worked very hard to uphold that and not only uphold it but we've also worked very hard to instill the importance of that in the next generation of leaders with the association. We also decided anytime anybody spent anything with us, any money, if they weren't 100% satisfied, we wanted them to have a complete 100% refund with no questions asked. Both of us had belonged to associations in the past. Both of us had no experience in starting an association. And so, what we decided is that in order to succeed, we would need to be an organization that he and I would be proud to be members of. 
and that if we were proud to be members of it, then perhaps other, other people would be too. And we decided that we were absolutely going to run a first-class organization, that we weren't going to cut any corners, that uh, uh, it, it, the, what I've likened it to in the past is being the smallest player on a sports team. Whatever you lack in size, you have to make up for in talent or you'll never survive. And so that was our, our attitude uh, about the ACFE. Lucky for us, it wasn't too long after we started the ACFE uh, that Jeanette Levy came into her life. And she's been with us now, well, uh, Almost from the start, not quite from the start, but almost from the start. So I answered a blind ad, and when I was called to come in an interview, I interviewed with Joe Wells, and he completely just blew my mind with his excitement and his vision and his mission. Um, what at that time the National Association of Certified Fraud Examiners could do uh, to create just uh, a new industry and, and anti-fraud detection and prevention. So 21 years later, and it's still to this day as, as exciting as it was, it's different, but just as exciting and interesting to me as it was way back then. They had a good idea, but a lot of good ideas don't succeed. Was there a moment early on when you thought, we this is the right place at the right time and this is going to take off. I knew from the start that unless we messed it up, it was it was a sterling idea. And we worked very hard over the years to do what was right. And it always comes down to what's in the members' best interest. When we announced the CFE program, failure for us was never an option. We didn't discuss failure at all. We discussed how we were going to serve the members best, how we were going to grow the organization, how we're going to make it better tomorrow than it was today, how we're going to make it better the day after that than it was tomorrow. After we had uh, gone five years, um, I pretty much knew that we would we'd be going on for a long time in in perpetuity actually. I think I think both Jim, Jeanette, and I, and, and others, including John, we have a fiduciary responsibility to our members, and that is to leave them an organization that they can be proud of that will go on uh, in perpetuity, and that's what we've tried to do. You've seen a lot of changes in 25 years, but what are some of the most significant that stand out to, to each of you? Most significant changes I've seen have been uh, centered around the computer, the internet. Um, I think back to the first time that the ACFE entered the electronic age, I went out and paid over $500 for a desktop fax machine that I brought in that one of the women in the office told me that I'd wasted money because we'd never use it. And we would sit around and watch it work thinking this is magic. And He's absolutely right. When we started the ACFE, there was no email. There were barely computers. There was no internet to speak of. Uh, when we were fairly young in our career, um, uh, Jim reviewed uh, virtually every application for membership, and he kept those on a yellow legal pad. And it was that way... Uh, it was that way for, for uh, quite some time. I think there's a lot of, of reasons that we've been successful, but uh, uh, I think as a management team, uh, none of us have ever felt like we were too good to do anything. We've uh, uh, stuffed envelopes, we've packed boxes, we've answered telephone calls, we've done, we've, we've done it all. And, and so uh, the people who uh, work at the ACFE now, 
um, pretty much have the same attitude. They're going to do whatever it need, whatever they need to do in order to keep our members uh, well informed and uh, and and responded to professionally. So, how do you think the membership has changed in 25 years? When we first started, it was the National Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. Uh, we probably weren't around more than a year or so before we started getting applications for international members. So there have been a lot of changes in terms of the membership. It, they're, they're, they're younger, um, they're a lot more geographically diverse, uh, they are much more computer literate and, and computer savvy. And uh, however, they still imbue the same spirit as the people have always had that have belonged to the organization. Speaking of that, what do you think are some of the characteristics that CFEs have in common that bring them to this organization and, and keep them as members? Our CFEs are unique in that they have the desire, the urge to improve themselves. You know, throughout my career, I've met a lot of professionals, and I could categorize them into two categories. Uh, a lot of people that I run into have got one year of experience 20 times. Um, the CFEs have got 20 years of experience, and they continue to learn, they continue to improve them, themselves, and they will do so until they turn out the light and close the door that final time. I think that one of the things that goes to the heart of uh, the CFEs is what attracted me to become an FBI agent in the first place. Um, I was, before the ACFE, I was an FBI agent for about 10 years, and, and all good investigators have an innate sense of curiosity. They want to know answers to questions, and so I, I think that's one of the characteristics of our CFEs is that innate sense of curiosity. Uh, the looking forward to actually confronting uh, problems and solving them. And I think also um, it's in an anthem that, that we play every year at our annual conference, and that is that I think the CFEs really want to try to help make the world a better place. And there's not many uh, jobs that I can think of uh, where you can say, I'm really doing something to help make the world a better place. And I think that's one of the very distinguishing uh, features of our membership. I agree that ethical and moral standards, I mean, sometimes, depending on their jobs, they have to put themselves in some awkward situations to bring wrongdoing to the forefront, but it's that innate sense of doing the right thing. So where do you see the organization in another 25 years? I feel very confident that regardless of the size of the association, that the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners will re remain the best association there is. We'll be um, top of the line professional. We'll be providing um, current techniques on fraud prevention, fraud detection. Um, we will still be a leader in the industry in 25 years. I guarantee that. In the United States alone, there are probably three or four hundred thousand or more people whose primary job it is to detect and deter fraud. These are internal and external auditors, uh, investigators for corporations, uh, governmental agencies who investigate fraud. And so um, one of the things that we see uh, demographically is that uh, the offense of fraud is uh, the preferred method of crime for the older and more educated individual. Uh, when you talk about street crimes, those are typically committed by 
uh, young people between the ages of 18 and 25 and, and predominantly male. Whenever you talk about fraud, it's a much more, um, uh, uh, it, it's the crime of the older and better educated individual. And our population is aging and will continue to age through about 2050 before it turns the other way. So if for no other reason you would think that uh, uh, our society would see more fraud in the next 30 or 40 years than less fraud. And so this provides uh, job opportunities for uh, CFEs. Uh, it provides opportunities for them to make a positive impact in society by helping reduce fraud. And so I would agree uh, wholeheartedly with Jim, and that is that um, the future of the ACFE um, it, regardless of who is running it at the time, it used to be me, and now it's Jim, and after Jim it'll be somebody else, and it'll be somebody else after that. But uh, the future of the ACFE is, uh, is very bright indeed. One of the most interesting things I've seen in 25 years is the, how the crooks are using different technologies to do the same old crimes. 18 years ago when I started, there was no computer fraud because nobody had a computer. But then once computers became prevalent, then that uh, started a whole different category. They're doing the same crimes. They're misappropriating assets. They're just doing it through a different vehicle. So in 25 years, it'll be interesting to see what new technologies come along to commit fraud and to help catch the perpetrator. We hear a lot today about computer fraud. And although there are some crimes for which technology uh, is employed. Back when somebody was uh, embezzling money using a, um, uh, a paper and pen, they didn't call it paper and pen fraud. And so uh, now if you use money to, uh, uh, if you use a computer to embezzle money, uh, it's all of a sudden computer fraud. And so what we do see is the same kind of crimes being committed over and over under using different technology and using a different uh, different characters. And so one of the things that we try very hard in, in all of our teaching is to make sure that our members and our CFEs understand the fundamentals of exactly how these crimes work and then they can apply them to any technology in any industry. If you're going to create a time capsule for ACFE members to be open 25 years from now, what would you put in it? I would put Jeanette in it. <laughs> well, I knew that was coming. Definitely some fraud magazine copies so we can laugh at Jim's hairstyles. And our membership list to see how that changes in the next 25 years. Anything technological I think we should throw in there because that'll be totally obsolete in 10 years. Paper may be obsolete. We could put some paper in there. <laughs> well, and apparently cursive is getting obsolete, so we might want to put some handwritten memos in there or something like that. If we if we were able to, to do this, I would want to put the spirit of today's CFE in a time capsule so that 25 years from now when people open the capsule, they can see what a real certified fraud examiner looks like. That wraps up another episode of Fraud Talk. We would like to thank Dr. Wells, Mr. Ratley, and Mrs. Levy for joining us to celebrate the ACFE's 25th anniversary. Also, thank you to John Gill for interviewing our special guests. To find more information on the ACFE's 25th anniversary, visit acfe.com in the coming months. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you next month.